As I'm sure you've probably seen the news lately, uh, there has been some changes to how realtors uh, practice working with their clients. Um, that was the result of an NAR uh, settlement with, uh, as a result of a lawsuit. I'm really not going to get into the whys or, you know, um, why that happened, but uh, what I really want to go over with you today is how it affects you as a consumer, um, whether you're a seller or if you're a buyer and you want to go see a house. Um, there are some things that have changed. Um, as you can see right here, um, I, I pulled up, got up here on the screen, um, the, some of the key things as a result of this settlement, uh, they removed the compensation of offers in the MLS. Traditionally, um, if I were to list a home for sale, uh, we would discuss with the seller what kind of commission you want to offer uh, to a buyer, potential buyer's agent uh, of, of somebody who may come to see your home. And from this point forward, that compensation is no longer publicly uh, uh, published in the MLS. So um, each uh, individual home is different. Um, if the seller is offering, uh, that's something where your buyer's agent would need to contact the listing agent to see if they're offering compensation. Um, and if not, there is a possibility uh, moving forward that you may have to make up the difference um, to pay your buyer's agent. Um, however, I do feel like um, the market is going to adjust this new way uh, of doing business and that uh, sellers will continue to be offering seller concessions because they know the majority of buyers, um, especially in Wayne County price range, uh, are going to need uh, concessions or that sort of assistance uh, with paying their buyer's agent. But the big change uh, for you as a home buyer, um, and if you probably saw my thumbnail, um, in North Carolina prior to this settlement, um, we had what was called, uh, it was called um, oral buyer agency. Uh, which meant uh, we didn't necessarily have to have anything in writing. It was just basically an agreement uh, while we were getting to know one another. We could, uh, you know, I would typically show a buyer maybe two or three homes. Um, and then, you know, if it's somebody I didn't know, and then once, you know, we got comfortable with one another, then we would sign a written buyer agency agreement. Um, and what that does is basically, uh, ties you in as, as a client um, for that agent is now uh, your fiduciary uh, to you. So any home that they show um, that's listed by another firm, they're representing you 100%. And then also if they happen to show a home uh, that they personally have listed or that their firm has listed, they would could possibly be what's considered a dual agent. Uh, but as a dual agent, Again, all of your personal information is kept confidential. Only material facts are shared, um, meaning that, you know, you can get a loan. Um, you know, you're ready, willing, and able buyer. Um, same thing with the seller. They would represent all material facts about the home, um, you know, things of that sort. So, again, each party is kept confidential, even in a dual agency situation. So, that's the main change. So, now... Um, you can actually go to open, you can still go to an open house because again, you're not necessarily being representing by anyone. Um, you're not discussing um, a home purchase with a particular agent. You're just going to go see the house. Um, so open houses are a great opportunity uh, to take advantage. If you're one of those people, you like to do your own shopping. You don't really want to, you know, get tied down with an agent right away. Um, and, you know, going to see open houses is one way uh, to to do that. Um, and another, another way, again, most agents uh, are very flexible. Um, you could sign a, um, the, the, the buyer agency, it can be set for any amount of time, any number of homes. Um, it's fully negotiable. Um, sometimes an agent may, you can sign a buyer agency just to see that one particular home. And then, you know, if you decide after seeing that home, you want to work, continue working with that agent, um, you can continue to do so. Um, and, you know, just you can amend that agreement to, you know, for a longer uh, period of time uh, while you're working with that agent. Another thing that has changed again, because there is no compensation being off necessarily offered up front, the buyer agent compensation traditionally 
Um, the buyer has always paid it, but the seller had generally always agreed up front to a certain amount. And that's really the big shift that has changed uh, with these new laws, uh, with the new regulations that have come out uh, that, that realtors have to abide by. Um, and again, this is something um, that's being overseen by the Department of Justice for the next seven years. Um, they want to make sure basically what they're really trying to do is separate the listing, a listing uh, agent and the seller from the buyer agent and the buyer. Um, so basically the payment is to two totally separate things. Um, so basically, you know, the buyer has always paid the buyer's agent, but it was understood that the seller was going to provide those funds at closing. So now the difference is, is now when you meet with your buyer's agent and you said you want to see the home, um, that buyer agent has a charge. All buyer's agents um, and agents in general have an idea uh, of what they feel like, um, what their value is worth. Um, it can range anywhere from well, it can be any number. Um, you know, generally my charge is anywhere from two to three percent, um, depending, um, you know, depending on the situation. Uh, with my current program, um, as long as I keep doing the mygoalsperagent.com home seller program, and it's a home that I personally have listed, um, I can do that, um, you know, that listing even, I can, represents you even cheaper um, through that program and you can get the details on the mygoalsperagent.com um, website if you want to you know, take a look at that. I uh, should have a link down in the description for you. But basically what your buyer's agent is going to do um, if you decide you want to make an offer uh, on a particular home is they're going to, you know, submit an offer of compensation uh, form basically with your offer um, to that listing agent and it's going to this is the amount that we're requesting that the seller to pay um, and then if you know the seller refuses to pay all of it or you know or none of it um, then that's again that's part of another negotiation so it's you know basically before the main difference between um, the way real estate was practiced before and now is that ev truly everything is negotiable um, so not only are you you know when you make your offer you're making your offer um, based on price um, you know seller concessions you know that you may need for closing costs um, any repairs that maybe you see you, you saw when you were walking through with your agent um, you know those are those are things that you know you were negotiating before and now like I said the buyer agent commission is now added on to that so um, you know in a buyer's market um, you know it's probably not a big deal most um, sellers you know who are desperate to sell their homes they're going to be willing to pay whatever amount uh, to get it just to get an offer if they if their house has been sitting for a while the only disadvantage um, you know I do see um, foresee you know like in a situation two to three years ago when homes were selling within hours of putting them on the uh, you know in the MLS um, you could run into some situations where again the buyer who can you know pay their own buyer's agent doesn't want it from the seller because the sellers really all they're doing is they're looking at uh, their bottom dollar um, and so you know when you when you make your offer they're going to deduct you know the seller concessions that you're asking for the um, you know your your buyer agent commission all those sorts of things and they're just going to look at the bottom dollar so when you're competing against five six seven eight other offers um that's when you know like i said a, a buyer who says hey i'll pay you know i can pay for my own buyer's agency i don't i don't need the seller to pay it um that again that does put that buyer you know in an advantageous position um, you know, and in the future, you know, that might be something, um, I do foresee again, the industry is changing. Um, and I do foresee possibly in the future, um, a situation where there could be discount buyer brokerages, um, you know, in a hot market, 
that could be an advantage, um, you know, where um, you're offering, you know, a lower buyer agent commission um, than, you know, the, the next buyer. Um, right now, um, those really uh, buyer discount brokerages really don't exist. Um, because again, you know, there is still a good amount of work that goes into, um, a, you know, a transaction, um, especially on the buyer side with all the inspections or, you know, ensuring repairs are made correctly, um, you know, the negotiation aspect. Um, so, you know, it's really important to have, um, an experienced agent, an agent who, um, who understands um, you know, how to get you the best deal and to be able to negotiate these commit these uh, new commission rules. Um, you know, these are, these are things that, you know, again, it was different in the past because the seller was just offering it up front. So it didn't matter. You could, you know, obviously I wouldn't recommend it, but you could hire, have hired an agent, you know, straight out of, you know, green right out of uh, real estate school. Um, and it really wouldn't have mattered the seller was paying say two and a half percent, three percent. He was paying that up front anyway. So it didn't matter. It wasn't coming out of your pocket. Um, but now, um, there's a situation where there's a possibility the seller might say, well, you know, I'll pay, I'll pay 1%, but I'm not paying three. Um, now, you know, that money's coming out of your pocket. Uh, obviously it can be financed in. There are, you know, products, the banks have adjusted. Um, and there are products where, you know, FHA, um, and I think VA is, is in the process of adapting to these new rules as well. Um, so you can finance that into the loan. Um, but, you know, again, um, when you're talking, you know, on a $300,000 house, 2%, you know, that's, you know, $6,000. Um, and, you know, so do you want to work with the agent who's, you know, like myself, um, he's been in the real estate industry for over 25 years. Um, or again, you know, I, I hear all the time, you know, well, my brother's nephew's, you know, niece or whatever just got their license and, um, you know, I want to help them out. So I'm going to buy my house with them. Well, you know, that's great if that's, you know, if that's what you want to do. Um, but keep in mind, you basically are handing that person, um, possibly six to $9,000, you know, and, and what are you getting for that? Um, so again, the real estate market is changing. Um, I think it's going to be very important, um, again, to, um, have, you know, an experienced agent, one that knows how to negotiate these things. Um, and can understand these things. So, um, again, if you'd like for, you know, me to go more into detail on this, um, with you, uh, in person, I'd be glad to do that over the phone. Um, you know, uh, you know, like I said, any details, uh, that I left out here, um, again, I try not to make this video too long. So I just want to kind of, um, do a basic overview, uh, of the situation. Um, but uh, again, I do offer buyer agency services. Um, and again, I can go over uh, the details of how I work um, with the commission situation, with the new uh, commission situation. Um, I am fairly flexible. Um, and again, um, every agent is going to have a unique way of handling this situation. Um, and uh, like I said, I'd be glad to help you. Um, and, uh, and like I said, you know, but the main thing is just remember, and this is for all realtors across the board, for any agent um, in the in the entire country, and this goes for not just North Carolina, but any state, they're going to have to get you to sign some sort of form, whether it's a buyer agency form, um, you know, or you can, you know, represent yourself as an unrepresented buyer, um, but there is still something you're going to have to sign um, that, you um, that shows, you know, that, that, you know, that you have established some sort of relationship with the person who's actually showing you the home. So, um, again, uh, it's an underrepresented and I'll can, I'll get into that probably I'll do another video, uh, on different ways, you know, um, to go into more detail about different, you know, forms of agency. But I really just want to kind of want to give you a quick overview, um, so that you'll know, um, now, um, and this, 
typically most buyers want a buyer's agent. Um, so again, this kind of gives you a basic overview uh, of, of the situation with the um, NAR settlement and all the changes. So anyway, again, uh, my name is Weldon Williford. I'm with EXP Realty. Um, and again, if you need any buyer services, give me a call. Thanks.